Hey guys, John here. I hope you're all doing well. Today's video is all about the legendary Digitech Whammy pedal. A pedal that I love. It's probably my favorite effect pedal ever. And it's the effect that I use the most. I'm not a very heavy effects user. I'm a simple guy. I like my guitars straight into the amplifier most of the time. But if I do use an effect, the Whammy is the one that I use the most. And I'm a bit of a Whammy nut. I've got quite a collection, so in this video we're going to nerd out a little bit over the Digitech Whammy. Now this one is quite unique, so this sort of prompted me to make this video. I saw this one last week online, and this is a very limited uh, special edition that you can only get at Toman. It's uh, the Toman 70th anniversary edition in this beautiful matte black. It's absolutely unique, and I did not see this coming. So yeah, I had to get one for my collection, basically. If you want one of these, you can only get them at Toman. I'll put a link below, it's an affiliate link. And by buying one of these through that link, you'll get to support the channel at no additional cost. But yeah, it's awesome. I posted this on my socials and a lot of people agreed with me that this version looks absolutely killer. So yeah, Dolmon is celebrating their 70th anniversary this year and they have a bunch of special product releases, including this one. And I'm glad I got this one. It's an excellent iteration of the Digitech Whammy. I remember back in the day when I first heard the whammy pedal on some records. The very first one probably was the song Devil's Dance by Metallica from the album Reload, one of my favorite Metallica records. And in that solo section and in some of the riffs, Kirk used the Digitic whammy and it sounds really cool and unique and I was like, what is that? And even the guitar tablature book, they didn't know what it was so they you know, went out of their way to sort of find out which notes were played while in fact they actually used the Digitech Whammy on that record. Of course, also artists like Steve Vai, Satriani and Tom Morello introduced me to that pedal and many other great bands like Korn. <laughs> And what I love about this thing is that you can sort of really transform the sound of your actual guitar with this. So you can do things that in the physical world aren't possible, like going crazy with bending the notes, you know, up multiple octaves down or low, doing harmonizations and all that stuff. And uh, it just really speaks to the imagination and it's just very inspiring to me. You can come up with some really cool and unique ideas using this pedal. And to this day, for the pitch shifting effects, I always prefer the actual Digitech. And I know that a lot of modeling platforms have tried to emulate the pedal and some pretty well, but none of them come close to the sound quality and the tracking of the actual whammy. <laughs> But yeah, this is basically the standard Whammy 5 with a different color and Whammy 5 is like the current edition uh, of the Whammy and it's the one that I usually recommend. Now what I'd like to do now is show you guys my collection and go over the history of the Whammy pedal because there's quite a history to discuss there. So in the late 80s, I think in 1989, the very first version of the Whammy was released and I think that they made this until 1993 or so. At first it wasn't super popular, uh, it was a bit of a weird pedal, but eventually I think it did catch on when famous artists started to use this thing. 
And uh, yeah, this is the original, the WH-1. And this is a kind of a collector's item. And I do have two because it's better than one. <laughs> and what I like about this thing is how small it is and how cool it sounds. Because the original ones, they use a different kind of chip that they can't use anymore in the newer version. And the tracking is actually pretty good, but it does sound kind of glitchy. And this is the one you, that you'll hear you know, on most of your favorite records, like the Rage Against the Machine stuff, the Metallica stuff, and the old Vi and Satriani stuff. Also, guitarists like Joe Perry, they used this one primarily. And yeah, it's just cute, and um, I hope that they someday will release kind of like a reissue of this size, because this size is just very cool, nice and compact, and uh, it has a lot of charm, this one. I don't use it as much as the five, but yeah. Absolutely love this version. And then years later, the Whammy 2 came out. This one over here. This one looks quite different, obviously. And, uh, you know, the enclosure is different. Some of the intervals are different, too. On the harmony side and the shift side. So that's cool. And one of the main differences about this version is the fact that you can select the presets or bypass the pedal with these switches over here. So you don't have to bend down anymore to twist the knob. You can use this switch over here to browse between the presets, so to speak. It's a little bit less sturdy though, and I think there was something up with the gain. So people thought it sounded less good or something, because there's this level input control over here, but the, the algorithms of the pitch shifting are basically the same as the one. And when you get one of these on the used market, usually they cost less than the original one so if you want the sound of the whammy one but want to pay less this one is a good one to get and i have this one with the box and everything so it's a nice collector's item and this one is in great shape now this is probably the most rare piece in my collection this came sort of after or at the same time as the whammy 2 and this is the base whammy i have this one in great condition imported it from japan i also have the box which is also in great shape and this one was specifically made for the bass guitar and the intervals and stuff are different too to accommodate the bass guitar. And this one is famous for being used by the bassist from Tool, Justin Chandler. So that's really cool. I don't play bass that often. And if I play bass, I usually don't use effects, but it's a fun pedal. And obviously this is like a collector's item that I'm glad to have. And I'm glad to have this in such good shape. Really cool. And then after the Whammy 2 came the XP100, this thing over here. This is uh, not my favorite one in terms of the looks, and it's a bit dusty too. I have this one in great shape and with the box as well. And, uh, you know, this one is famous for being used by artists like Korn. And you can also browse through the presets with these switches and bypass the pedal. But this one also has like a volume pedal and a wah and some other effects. So in that regard, it's you know, unique because none of the other whammy pedals have a wah, for example. And on the back here, you can see all the different effects. So there's like an auto wah, as I said, a volume pedal, various types of wahs and a bunch of pitch shifting effects. So that's really cool. It's a fun little unit. I don't use this often, but it's cool to have in the collection, of course. And I also must add that the tracking got a little bit worse in this version. So it's kind of glitchy. And there's a little bit of a delay, a bit more than the Whammy 1 and the Whammy 2. After the XP100, the Whammy 4 was released. And this is basically the reissue. And they had this in production for many years. And you could see this on many pedal boards in like the 2000s and stuff. And this one is cool. I used this one for years as well. It has a bunch of settings and uh, it's pretty sturdy. So uh, it does sound a little bit glitchy. In, in comparison to some of the newer versions. So it has a nice and nasty sound, but I like it. It also has the dive bomb and stuff, which is a very fun mode. And uh, it also has MIDI. So I think that this is the first version that included MIDI. Something that a lot of people didn't like about this version is the tone suck. So that had to change at some point, basically. People weren't really happy about it. They modded this version so that it had true bypass and stuff. Then they released this limited edition 20th anniversary whammy in chrome. And this one is really cool. Also quite a collector's piece, I guess you could say. And they made 2000 of these. This is number 1392. Mine is a little bit dirty. It has some fingerprints on it and stuff, but uh, it's a really cool piece. 
sounds exactly the same as the Whammy reissue or the Whammy 4, but obviously looks quite unique. And then finally, Digitech came out with a new version. And I think that the Whammy DT was the first one and not the Whammy 5, but I'm not entirely sure. So correct me if you want to. But this one is pretty cool. With this one, they introduced the new chords mode. So it's basically polyphonic and not as glitchy anymore. Not really glitchy at all, in fact. So the algorithms are really good on this one. And this is a big pedal really big. This one has the sort of drop tune and shift section over here. So it shifts up and down. And you can sort of enable this section with the drop tune switch over here. You've got a momentary switch. And then this is your standard whammy section over here. But again, polyphonic, and you can use them at the same time and stuff. So it's a really fun and creative pedal. So this one again has MIDI and there is a foot switch jack. So you can connect it to the Digitec foot switch and browse through the presets with that. So you don't have to bend down and stuff. And I think this one also has true bypass if you enable that function. So that's cool. Great pedal indeed. And then we have the Whammy 5. And this is like the regular version. The cool thing about the Whammy 5 in comparison to the DT is the fact that this one has the classic mode over here. And that's sort of the old warbly mode, you know, when you think of that Radiohead song, I can't think of the title, but you know, that sort of warbly sound, you can do that with this one as well, as well as the chords mode. So the polyphonic mode, and this one is so cool. It has a bunch of drop tune options as well. And it sounds really good. And this one is what Gojira uses for, for the most part, as far as I know, I've seen this on their pedal boards and yeah, love this thing a lot. And of course, they also had to reissue the bass whammy. Now, supposedly this one has a bit better tracking for low notes. So that's great, obviously, for bass guitar. Some people like to use these for their extended range guitars because of that. And the intervals are also different. You got some fun intervals on this one, like one octave up going to two octaves up and intervals like fifth up to one octave up. So those are some intervals that tend to work better with bass guitar. Yeah, this is a really cool uh, version of the Whammy, quite unique and great to have in the collection as well. Now, when they made the Whammy 5, they also made a bunch of pedals in that product line. They took some of the algorithms from that Whammy DNA and created some cool pedals like the Freakout, which is a very cool feedback pedal. Of course, the Drop Tune, which a lot of people still use for tuning their guitars down on stage. The Mosaic, this is like uh, a 12 string emulator and the Lux, which is kind of like a chorus based on the detune section of a whammy. And then finally, again, we land on this limited edition version of the whammy five only available at Tomon right now. I'm not sure how many they bought, so I don't know how long this will last. But again, you can get this through my affiliate link in the description or the comments below. Now, which one would I recommend? To be honest, I would recommend the whammy five unless you're a collector and unless you want that sort of signature old school sound. The Whammy 5 is hard to beat. It has many great settings, many great intervals, and the fact that you can switch between the classic and chords mode is really cool. So it gives you a lot of flexibility and versatility. You've got the true bypass, the MIDI, and uh, yeah, I just love this one a lot. And this black limited edition looks really cool. So I recommend getting this one, in fact. Now, all the clips that you heard in this video was my ESP L3 SCT-607B through my Quad Cortex with my Lichtlärm Audio Prometheus Capture Pack and a little bit of reverb and delay. All right, that's all for this video. I hope you enjoyed me nerding out over the Digitech Whammy. Love this pedal. If you haven't already, please hit the like and subscribe buttons down below as that really helps the channel out. I'd usually appreciate it. You can also check out my Ko-Fi web store where I sell Quad Cortex captures and all that good stuff. Check out my affiliate links. Let me know in the comments down below what you think of this legendary pedal. And if you have one of these, let me know which one. Also, be sure to follow Sonic Drive Studio on Facebook and Instagram. That's all for this video. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you next time. Cheers. Ah!